Now we want to do the next step, which is to put a trigger inside the room. And we're just going to do a trigger, really simple, over here on this door. So we're going to select the door object, and go, again, go to the F key, frame it in our view. Oh, that's right, that's our scene view. So there we go. So now we're looking at the door. And we can, you know, adjust our view so we can see a little bit more if we want to do this kind of stuff. That's always possible to do. Uh, you can arrange the windows however you want to do that for your own convenience. Anyway, so we're going to go into fly-through mode as we talked before. And check this out like this. And now we have our door. And all we have to do with our door, we already have our box collider on our door. And what we're going to do in that case is we're going to choose is trigger on that. And then at that point, now that it is a trigger, we're going to go to the component menu and choose again audio and audio source. And now that we have that added, we can put our sounds in there. We don't want it to play on awake. And we don't want the max, doesn't really matter for the max distance, probably maybe 50 would be fine. Um, and there's, it's not like a continuous sound. It's going to be a very quick sound that we're going to do, and we're going to be really close to the door when we do it. So it's not really going to matter too much. Um, I will bring it down because we want the sound to be reasonably strong, but not so much so that it dominates. It's just a bump, bumping into a door, so it's not really, it shouldn't be a really loud sound. All right. Now, what we have to do, though, is we want this to be an interactive experience, which means that we need to interact with the trigger that we've set up for the collider. So to do that, we have to create a script. So here's how we create a script. First of all, we want to go to the Create menu and choose JavaScript. Now what we should do is type a sound name for it. So I say sound trigger, for example. That's a pretty easy one. And now that we've done this, we click open. When we click open, we're going to open up the IDE for Unity called Mono Develop. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to wipe out everything that's here. This is important for some kinds of situations, but for ours, it's not as necessary. And we're going to type the following stuff exactly as I type it. Var stands for variable. Sound. I'm creating the variable called sound, which is a type audio clip. I'm creating a variable, which is called sound, which is a type audio clip. All right. Next line. We'll just leave that blank. Go to the next one here. And we're going to choose function on trigger enter and two parentheses and the reason why is because there's normally a parameter that goes there but we're going to leave it blank because we're not going to pass it that kind of parameter we're going to open up the curly brackets and this is what's going to happen within our function when the trigger happens this is what we'll do and what we'll do is audio, which refers to the audio source, play one shot. And then in parenthesis, this is the parameter we're going to pass for this one, sound. And then we end this with a semicolon. You notice that a couple of these lines we end with semicolons. Usually when you do a statement inside the JavaScript, you have to end your lines with semicolons. And now we're going to close up the statement. It's pretty simple. We got a another curly bracket bracket to close the statement out. So now we're pretty much done here. We want to save the results. We go to the file menu, choose save. If everything has been done right, then what will happen is that Unity will not have any red lines here and it will be able to play the scene. If you have a situation where it says there's an error and you need to fix some stuff, then you'll have to check things out and make sure that you've typed everything exactly correctly. As long as you have, this should work perfectly fine. Now, we've created the script, but what we do need to do is to add it 
to the object in question. So we can take the sound trigger script in this case and just drag it over the door object like so. And now that we've done it, we can see the audio source that's there and then we have our sound trigger script here. And you notice it says script, sound trigger, and then a sound. It says none of type audio clip. So it's looking for an audio clip here. So let's just add an audio clip. And we can also do that by clicking this very small little uh, spot here. And then we can go to our, say, our door impact sound and close the window. And now save our scene, play it up, and watch what happens. this thing and we went there that's it so that's step one so what happens though if we want to be able to run into the door but not actually pass through it because that's what I did was I made the thing a trigger so if I make it a trigger it means I can pass through it so the way around that is you put an object in front of the door. And we've already actually done that with an object here that we call door trigger. And door trigger is right here. Now what we want to do though is backtrack and remove what we've already been doing. So what we'll do is we'll take out the audio source. When you want to remove components, you go to here. It says remove component. So that's how you can remove components from, the, uh, from any game object. And we're also going to remove our script put that back and now what we're going to do is we're going to add it to the door trigger instead. So again, let's do, use, use the other method that we talked about to add the audio source. Go add component, do audio, and audio source. And then we're going to add our sound trigger, but this time we're going to add our sound trigger to the door trigger object and not the door object. And we go like this, drop that, and this time let's go get a different sound one that's a little bit more uh, has a has a has a grunt after it. So we'll just do this one here, the door impact two sound. And now that we have that, let's give it a try. Basically, it's the same thing. Only now, we'll, oh, the other thing that we need to do, very important, is we need to go back to the door and turn the trigger off because then we have a physical door again. And this one, the reason why it's invisible, the door trigger, see if I were to turn on the door trigger, uh, make it visible, you actually see another door in front, really. So what happened in this case is this mesh renderer is the thing that actually draws the object inside the scene. So what I did was I turned that off. Now the object is still active inside the scene, but I made it invisible. So that now what happens is if I walk close up to there, I go into the boundaries of this invisible object and that acts as the trigger for the solid object that I'm running into. Okay, so let's check that out. First of all, go to the file menu, chase save the scene, always very important. And now we can play. And so, there we go. So, there you have it. That's the simplest way to do the exercises that we talked about inside the book. And I hope you had fun. And obviously there's a lot more to learn about Unity, but this is as far as we're going to go for this book and app series for now. See you in later chapters.